I just finished my first sketchbook ever as an adult. And I want to assure you that no matter how aesthetic things look on social media, you don't need to finish every sketchbook. And your sketchbooks are a place to play and experiment. They're long, self-directed art lessons. They're adventures into your curiosity, and they don't have to be for anyone else. These spaces are for helping you find your voice in whatever way that means. Maybe that's through writing and making diagrams. Maybe that is through list making. There's no wrong way to work on a sketchbook and there's no right way to quote unquote finish it. It doesn't mean that it has to be finished all the way to the end. If you have half of that sketchbook still blank and you learned some really interesting things from that book, that's totally okay. That's cool too. These spaces, they are for helping you find your voice, refine your visual language, and link it all together with all the different research and interests you have as an artist. A sketchbook can have such a positive impact on your practice, even if it doesn't end up really being sketches. Like this one, for example. I'll flip to some of my favorite sections. It's mostly writing, but I would use it to draw diagrams for learning guitar and getting better at songwriting. And this is no less of a sketchbook than this where I have these aesthetic spreads. Your sketchbooks are a place to play and experiment. They're not always going to be perfect. Each sketchbook you have is going to provide opportunities for self-directed learning. Each one tells you little bits and pieces about yourself, some of which you're aware of and others you weren't so aware of. And that's what's kind of fun and magical about doing them. When I was working in the art world, I was so focused on the questions behind my work that most of my sketchbooks just looked like this. They were all text. Before social media, sketchbooks were rarely seen. Here's one of my sketchbooks from college, and this is just all of my classmates standing around while we're doing critique, and they made perfect posing figure models. For me, back then, sketchbooks were this private and intimate space. It was something I was never going to share. It was an opportunity for me as an artist to play, but it was actually something that, after college, I kind of just opted out of. And why did I opt out of that? Well, <laughs> productivity. I really wanted to be productive in my studio. And what do I mean by that? A lot of times I found my visual language as an artist to be something that I, all I needed in order to get to it was to lean into a flow state. So I'd go to yoga, I'd do some meditation, I'd try to get myself into a state of being inspired. Kind of like if you are someone who plays The Sims and you know what kind of behaviors can get your sim to feel inspired, you're just going to do those things, right? So I would say, all right, I would just try and get in that flow state and hope that I'd make something good. And then bad things would happen, like this sketch. I would end up making mediocre art. A lot of attempts at good paintings got scrapped. And I took that approach for over a decade. <laughs> but through it, I built up a confident visual language for my style and my work. And the years of prior practice meant that usually, if I could catch that flow state, I'd make something rad if I simply just showed up. But opting out of the practice of sketching put me in a position to regularly make the same mistakes in paintings. There were two things going on. I wasn't evolving my work in a way that excited me, and I felt like I followed a very specific formula for getting things done, TM. A constant productivity mindset wasn't good for me when I was coming back to my creativity full time. I wanted to just do silly things like this, like draw my sims. I wasn't evolving my work in a way that excited me, and I often felt like I had to follow this very specific formula. And to combat my productivity mindset, what I did is I sort of combined this sketchbook and my approaches to my list making tendencies. So I really like to make either habit tracker lists, calendars, and also just big lists of say content ideas or things I wanna do. And that list making led me to think about prompts that guide me through the different sketchbooks that I'm working through like this one. The sketchbook might feel unproductive at times, but remember that you're accessing your joy in spite of the expectations that we all have in late stage capitalism. And that just feels good. 
Each sketchbook that you open, you're interacting with a different subset of questions that you might have for yourself. For me, like right here, what would it mean if I put my extra acrylic paint down on the paper and drew on top of it with colored pencils? What would that look like? Material constraints, shape, textures, and all of those combining creates really fun challenges to overcome. And it can feel limiting at first, maybe intimidating, but you just gotta go with it. You can learn something so different from each sketchbook, and that is just so cool. Some sketchbooks are gonna end just because a phase of your life changes and how you're approaching materials and the way you tend to experiment is just different now, and that's okay too. So with this leather-bound sketchbook, I was really focused on drawing more with shape. I tend to work a lot with tracing and projectors, and I'm okay with that. However, I really wanted to try and break free of my digital approaches and tr build trust with my hands. This really was the self-compassion sketchbook. How can I be kind to myself? How can I think about playing around and making silly little TikTok memes or, you know, sticker designs that I'd love to have and just see what happens? I'll show you a couple more pages in here. Some of my favorite things in here are my interior sketches. Again, some of these hundred heads. I did this while I was at my friend's ceramic studio, just hanging out while she was trimming pots. I love this one. I, my love for landscapes and windows came together really perfectly with this. Love this portrait and this one. This one I feel like is okay, but it was really leaning into my teenage self. This is something my teen self would have loved to draw. Lots more landscape and trying to push how I'm working with color. Again here, landscape, but trying to push how I'm working with mark making on top. So all of these are little challenges for me to really think about how the sketchbook itself is a self-directed art lesson. Sometimes it's okay to just really experiment and lean into your love of things, like doing studies of rocks. All right, so when I got this sketchbook, I was really excited about the paper quality. And I was excited that it was gonna lay flat for me, which is very, very fun. And I was trying to think here about marks. In the past, I made so much work using mechanical pencil or really sharp pencil and really focusing on hatch marks and line quality. And I was trying to think here differently, what are the different ways that I can approach drawing landscapes? Here's a spread from dinner. Just staring out at the falls nearby. This is the Steelhead Falls Trail and the canyon view, and I got really into drawing each of the layers of the strata. And this is what I mean by really playing with those marks. I did this all using this here Stabilo 0.4 pen. I love these. They are great. And they actually don't hurt my hand as much as pencil does. This was a preliminary sketch for a painting I finished of Steelhead Falls. And that this is actually bringing up a good problem that I run into when I work like this, is that I always have to think about pushing contrast and understanding shape a little bit more. And then this is me actually using colored pencil to do a similar thing, and it ended up hurting my hand a whole lot less. So this is where I feel most comfortable to continue working with colored pencil, especially on top of marker. Really just thinking about mark making and layering. And then these are pretty cool because they are all just value studies. So again, kind of leaning into contrast, line, mark making, all big questions that I ask in this sketchbook. So then with this journal, I got really excited about this because it was one, a very comfortable size, and two, it was going to be all watercolor paper. So it was gonna be the place that I practice gouache. So I did this painting as a preliminary study for a sunset painting workshop that I was gonna be teaching later that week. 
This is the gardens and part of the circular flower arcs at Bees and Blooms. And then this was also done on my trip to Oregon. So building on the skills that I built in this sketchbook, this one was started in May and I got about halfway through it. And then I got to this sketchbook in which I started this in October and it immediately became my favorite place to work. I started really thinking about how I can build dynamic compositions from a bunch of different photo references. And these started to get me really excited to work in gouache. I was using a set of jelly gouache for all of these preliminary sketches, and I started to look into what it would be to get myself a set of professional artists gouache, because this was my jam. I was going off in this sketchbook, just having such a fun time, experimenting, playing, really getting to learn how gouache worked, and it started to make me realize that gouache could behave a lot like oil paint, but with the ease and mixability of watercolor. I'm someone who uses my brushes to mix my colors, which isn't great, but with gouache, there's not really consequences to doing that. All right, so same photo reference, two very different sketchbooks. This is gouache, and so I'm really trying to think about mark making and layering with gouache. And then this is the exact same composition, but done using colored pencil and alcohol marker in this sketchbook, where I'm really trying to think about how I can push my mark making. And I think doing this one first informed my approach on this one to really be more bold with layering my colors down here and thinking about the way that I was making marks in the trees up above. So again, both of these are unfinished sketchbooks. You can see how much is unfinished here and here, but yet they are informing my work. So don't discredit the unfinished. These sketches in this book got me so excited to really get out there and get out on the trails. And for me, this was the big discovery I was making of, hey, I think that I want the main subject matter that I focus on now to be landscapes in the Bay Area and to be different trails that I love in the hills of the East Bay, in the coasts of Marin. This is the last painting I finished in this book with the different cordyceps mushrooms here. And I stopped on this one because I got this one. <laughs> when this book came in the mail, I kind of stopped everything. And with this, there was the challenge of time, right? Like I had to finish this book very fast. I had a little over a month because I got it in the mail and I knew that my best friend's mom had passed away. And so I wanted to go back and be there for the memorial service. And so I wanted to get this sketchbook done, even though it's not technically due until April. That way I can drop it off by hand and thank the person who sent it to me. And you can see all of the different ways my other sketchbooks are informing this one, right? Like I have little bits of writing here. I have different ways of approaching gouache. Like I would not have these gouache paintings in here that feel as strong if I didn't have this sketchbook to teach me how to make them. I wouldn't be experimenting with markers and lines if I didn't have this sketchbook for doing just that, right? All of these different things inform one another and that's what's so cool. The latter half of this sketchbook is really informed by this leather bound one where I have my colored pencil drawings. I have some more of the sketch tests that I do in this notebook. This was really just a combination space of all of the other sketchbooks in one place. And I'll do a more detailed bit into these drawings when I talk about a zine that I made. So definitely 
hit that subscribe button down below if you want to be notified when I post that. So here's my prompt for you in terms of thinking about your sketchbook. Step one is that you're going to write. And then you're going to write about what are your favorite materials. And as you're writing about your favorite materials, I want you to experiment, not just with things that are your favorite to use, use things that make you inspired to try something risky. And through our material selection, we can find some rules. So the next thing you're want, going to want to do is create rules. Are there specific materials that you're not going to allow yourself to use? Are there ones that you, there, you are going to allow yourself to use? And how is that going to work for you? Next, I'm actually going to suggest that you find a sketchbook for each of those materials. So if you realize, so we're going to need to find a space for each. So if you realize you really want to work with pen, maybe you find some paper that you're really excited to work with with pen. Maybe if you want to really push how your materials can hold up on more canvasy type paper you get something with that's a handbound journal that has that type of paper that excites you or maybe you just get yourself a watercolor sketchbook and you use that to improve your skills with watercolor and gouache another thing that i want to encourage is to not be afraid to cover things up also i didn't do this in this journal but i made a good example of it where I just got some cheap construction paper from Daiso and I glued this in here and worked on a gouache painting on top because I had a marker drawing that was bleeding through slightly on the other side. So make a space for each. Don't be afraid to cover, th cover things up. And then number five, what do you want to learn? And I think this is going to be the most important one, is to actually consider and think about what it is that you want to learn from this sketchbook. And then keep that in mind. And this might be the question that helps you decide, hey, I think I'm done with this sketchbook. I'm ready to move on to the next one. It's really cool to track your growth, even if it's in a bunch of different places that are half finished. It's still growth and you're still learning. If you want to learn a little bit more from me, and this prompt sounds exciting to you, you can sign up for my newsletter on Substack and you'll get a free guide to seeing more creatively when you're outside. And when you sign up for Substack, you might see that it's gonna say, hey, do you wanna pay $5 or do you wanna go for free? The $5 tier is kind of like my Patreon. That's where you'll get free access to different art lessons, additional prompts and things like that from me every month. And then the free option is if you just want to get my email newsletter and the free things that I'm offering. So yeah, that's it. Thanks for watching and thinking about all of my sketchbooks. There are so many sketchbooks that I didn't even show you all. So many <laughs> sketch <laughs> books. Until next time. Bye.